Comedian Samantha Bee is having a pretty tough week. During the Wednesday night episode of her show Full Frontal, she told this joke. Watch. This year, the bow ties were gone, replaced by Nazi hair. Nazi hair. Nazi hair. Well, kind of a lame joke in the first place, but it turns out that one of the men that she ridiculed, Kyle Coddington, has stage four brain cancer. Oops. Most of the backlash against B focused on the fact that she attacked a cancer patient, but Joe Concha of The Hill had a smarter take. Regardless of the man's medical status, he asked, why was it okay to call him a Nazi in the first place when he couldn't defend himself? Joe Concha joins us now. So, Joe, is, this seems consistent with her show, I'm Not a Watcher. Is this kind of thing, is this sort of, this normal joke on the Samantha B show? It's a very hateful show, Tucker. This is what late night has become, unfortunately. It's no longer the days of David Letterman before he became a curmudgeon, or Jay Leno, or of course, Johnny Carson. This is what it's about. And look, that is the main focus here. Not so much, they wouldn't have attacked this kid if they knew he had stage four cancer and was right. suffering, I, I yeah, going right. through chemotherapy. Any reasonable person would say that. But when you, on national television, show a 20-year-old college student and you call him a Nazi, in the context of his hair, in the conference that he is attending, here are the consequences that could happen. Pick the cancer part out of this. He goes back to campus. Do you think he gets mocked and bullied? Well, given the hostility on college campuses, probably. And then what happens next? He either brushes it off or it goes in another direction that we've seen on so many college campuses, and that is that it spirals into a thought process of possibly even hurting yourself or worse. We saw it at Rutgers in New Jersey where a kid was exposed as being gay, and before you knew it, he drove up to the George Washington Bridge, Tucker, and he threw himself off. That's how quickly these things can spiral out of control. And Samantha B has yet to apologize for calling this kid right. and other kids there a Nazi. Instead, she does this half-baked apology, like, we're sorry we offended you. Hey, Samantha, here's an idea. Why don't you pick up a phone, because this kid has stage four cancer. There is no stage five. And apologize to him directly by phone in your own voice instead of a stupid tweet that wasn't even an apology in the first place. Sorry, I don't get emotional, Tucker, but this really got me angry. Well, it also seems, and here's the other problem, it doesn't seem very funny. I mean, is this a state of play in late night, kind of po political lectures? rather than jokes? Oh, well, I don't know if you caught Stephen Colbert on election night. He does a special on Showtime, and it's supposed to be a celebration of Hillary Clinton's victory. And he doesn't mm -hmm. even have any jokes planned if Hillary actually lost. And he doesn't know what to do when it's clear that Trump is going to win. So he has somebody on his panel, and her name is Jana Friedman. She's an alleged comedian. And he says, so how are you feeling right now? And let me give you the quote, because this is what comedy is in 2017. She says, I feel as if I'm about to give birth to a baby that's already dead. Ugh. Stephen Colbert is a devout, Catholic, a devout Catholic. We hear it all the time. And instead of him saying, you know what, I get that we're in a politically incorrect world. I get that even if you're pro-choice, you probably find that offensive. He doesn't say anything. Instead, he makes a joke. He says, hey, that's the kind of panel discussion you have on Showtime these days. So that's where we are in 2017, Tucker, where we call strangers Nazis without them defending themselves or having the ability to defend themselves. And if a president or somebody, a candidate wins the presidency, then we're comparing it to stillborn births. So here's something I did find kind of funny. None of that's funny, as far as I'm This is funny. So I, I read the other day where Samantha Bee was going after somebody for not being diverse enough. Someone mm -hmm. is racist and hasn't reached the elevated moral status of Samantha Bee. Yeah. Everyone's not hiring enough women of color, I think was her accusation. Here's a picture of, I think I took this from your column. Here's mm -hmm. Samantha Bee and her writers at some one of the endless award ceremonies. Those are her writers. Doesn't seem like a very diverse group to me. Yeah. It, Where's the self-awareness here, Joe? She, she went after another cable network uh, where he used to work at uh, one time, MSNBC, and said that they don't have enough black women on the network. So, since I'm a journalist, I actually was curious, and I thought, well, gee, I wonder how many black women work for the Samantha B. Full Frontal Show. And I looked at all writing credits and directors <laughs> and producers, and I found 33 people. Guess uh -huh. how many out of those are African-American women? I don't know, 25? One. One. So but she's she preaching about diversity and hiring more black women, and she's one for 33. And calling people Nazis. She's got 33 people writing for her show? No, it's, it's writers, uh, directors, and segment producers, all, all in <laughs> aggregate. That's a lot. Is her show like eight hours long? How long is it? It's once a week, and I believe it's an hour.
That's would you like that kind of staff here? Do you, you have the same? Yeah, thing, right? I mean, I could I could make my cocker spaniel a star with a staff of 33, <laughs> and it would be more diverse than her staff. I'll tell you that. That's hilarious. You own a cocker spaniel? I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah we do. Hmm. Joe, thanks. Great to see you tonight. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you.